In this video, we're gonna talk about building a panel. This panel can be a support for your painting, drawing, collage, or any other two-dimensional fine art application. The most important thing we can do is to plan correctly. Our panel consists of two main components, a cradle and a surface. The cradle is the support that the panel surface will sit on top of. For materials, I'm using one by two inch poplar to create the cradle. And I've got this five foot square quarter inch sheet of plywood for the surface. My plan is to build two panels, each measuring a foot and a half by two feet. This means I'm going to need four pieces of wood for each panel and taking into account that I'll have two panels total, I'll need eight pieces of wood. When possible, it's a good idea to start thinking in batches and build for the future. We'll measure out our wood and remember the adage, measure twice, cut once. You can always adjust your measurements, but you can't adjust your cuts. So that now we have our wood cut down to appropriate size. Now that I know how many pieces I'll need for the sides, I have to decide the cradle's orientation. The wood can lay down like we see here, creating a shallower cradle that will make our panel sit closer to the wall when hung, or up like this, which will give us a deeper cradle, which will sit further away from the wall. For panels this size, the difference is purely aesthetic. If we were to be building much larger panels, we'd be needing to construct structural integrity and build a budded cradle with two pieces of wood on each side. But for today, it's just a choice of how you want it to look. I like the deeper cradle, so I'm going with that. As soon as we begin assembling our cradle, we're gonna to have to cut miter edges into the sides. And so I like to give myself a rough guideline so I know which direction I'm looking for. The first thing I wanna do is create a miter cut on the edge of my sticks. By definition, a miter cut is any even, angular cut that changes the edge of a piece of wood from its original 90 degrees to a lesser angle. But in practice, this is most commonly used to cut down to a 45 degree angle, so that when paired with another piece of wood cut at 45 degrees in the opposite direction, they reform a 90 degree perfectly square corner. The first thing I'm gonna do is make a 45 degree cut on one end of each of my sticks. Now I'll make another measurement. From the outermost point of that angled cut, I measure to my desired length. I don't need to do this for all my sides, just once per length. My saw blade is already set to a 45 degree angle. So I bring my wood over and line the measurement up with the saw blade itself. I want the saw blade to come down just on the outside of my measurement. Holding my wood in this exact spot, I'm now able to set up my stop block. The stop block is already cut at a 45 degree angle, so it's gonna cradle our mitered stick perfectly and I'll secure it to the backstop and make my cut. Now we can take any other stick that needs to be the same length and throw it in that stop block and it will be cut down to the exact same size. Once they're done, I can turn them around and match them up to make sure that everything is even. And now we just need to arrange them in place and adhere them. There are a variety of tools made to hold your pieces together while you glue them dry. This clamp is designed to keep two mitered sticks in place so they can be glued and left to dry overnight. I prefer to glue them and assemble them into place using a simpler right angle block and some brads to keep everything in place while the glue dries. So we'll need some wood glue and a brad nailer. We're gonna use one and three quarter inch brads and we determine this by lining them up on our angle itself. We want them to be long enough to penetrate the adjacent wood, but not so long that they risk jutting out through the sides. It's a good idea to test out a few brads on a scrap piece of wood just to make sure your adjustments are correct. Now we just apply some glue, spread it out, and assemble it using the block as a guide. Align your gun and fire two brads into place. And now we'll let the cradle sit to dry. We don't want to move them if possible as it could misalign our angle and create a parallelogram. While those are drying, we'll cut down our panel surface. It's a good idea to do some quick measurements, ensuring that whatever wood is left over will be the most versatile size for future use. Regardless of our intended size, it's always good to double check our assembled cradle to make sure it isn't a little bit smaller or larger than we had intended. Here I realized that my 18 inch is actually 18 and 1 16th, so I make adjustments accordingly. Looks like my 24 was spot on. I make my measurements on the plywood, purposely going a bit over. I line it up on the panel saw and make my cuts. Now I have my panel fronts ready to be fastened to the cradles. Now when I do a preliminary alignment, I can see that that extra half inch I allowed myself means the front will be a little bit proud of the cradle. This is intentional. We can fix that later. You may be wondering why we don't just cut them exactly, but because in my 15 plus years of doing this, I've learned that the unpredictability of the cradle assembly makes an exact match close to impossible. And if the front is a little bit smaller than the cradle at any point on the circumference of the panel, you've essentially wasted all this work and need to start over. It's better to fix this in post than risk throwing it away. 
We'll ultimately be trimming off that extra with a router, and I made a video of that process, so you can watch that after this for your finishing touches. Okay, we're looking good to go. So next we'll apply glue to the front of our cradle, align the panel on top, and we're ready to clamp. I'm using these rigid supports to ensure our clamps apply even pressure to all areas of the surface and clamp down evenly all around. Always checking your edges to make sure it's properly aligned. Clamps all over, double checking to ensure there are no gaps between the cradle and the surface. We'll let that sit for 24 hours to ensure that our glue is nice and dry, and then we'll be ready to finish. We'll router off excess overhang and sand any rough edges. Once that's done, we can prepare the surface for artwork, and we're done.